The Pentagon has stopped their plan to offer COVID-19 vaccinations to detainees in Guantanamo Bay. Did you hear about this plan? Well, this comes as Republicans were accusing the Pentagon of prioritizing terrorist suspects over the American people. And joining us now to weigh in is New York Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to see you again. Thank you. Great so, to see you as well. What in the world was this plan and who in the world thought it was possibly a good idea? You know, it's unconscionable to believe that the Biden administration and the Pentagon would think that it is appropriate to put terrorists at the front of the line. Individuals like Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, who is the 9-11 mastermind, uh, somebody who represents a community in New York City, uh, that lost thousands. Uh, we are uh, very offended. And I'm, I'm actually pleased to see, because of everyone being so outspoken throughout the last 24 hours, mm -hmm. that they've actually rolled back this plan. But just to put into context what this means and what it would have meant to the people that I represent, you know, we have senior citizens who are unable to get an appointment for the vaccination because they're still waiting for the supply. Uh, to meet the demands here in New York and across the country as well. We have 9-11 first responders and recovery workers who are now average 58 years old, so they yet do not qualify for the vaccination. And to think about the fact that, you know, they were going to proceed with this plan to give the vaccination to terrorists is really something that I think is completely outrageous, and they did the right thing to rescind this. But we really want to know what was behind this decision making right. and why did they even think of this as a priority? Well, it's just kind of reprehensible. We live in this culture right now where everybody's sort of trying to outwoke each other <laughs> with, with, you know, how, how woke they can be, what they can do that, that will be shocking. Um, in Massachusetts, which, of course, borders the state of New York, uh, Ilhan Omar, um, your colleague in, in Congress, she and, and Governor uh, Charlie Baker, they're moving forward with vaccinating prisoners before elderly residents, many in nursing homes, many mm -hmm. in assisted living centers. Um, and, and just uh, basically that means that the, the Boston Marathon bomber is going to get the vaccine or access to the vaccine before my grandparents, mm -hmm. which seems to make absolutely no sense. Well, remember, at the beginning of this crisis, they used COVID as an excuse to release thousands of criminals back onto the streets. Right. Uh, and then we had to fight so hard just to get correction officers, the NYPD, the proper PPE to keep them safe while they did their job. And again, we had to uh, take up the fight to get our correction officers and the NYPD become a priority class to make sure that they get vaccinated. They're out in the community. They interact with many people each and every day. They cannot work from home. And we actually had to fight for them to get the vaccination and make them a priority, even though they were first responders. So, so this is uh, the type of thing that we're dealing with on a regular basis. It isn't always common sense, um, but I'm glad to see that, you know, when people have been vocal, you know, we do we do have these little victories and it's a shame that we have to call it a victory. But quite frankly, uh, it, it is, at least for those that I represent. Yeah, it's a shame that it has to even get to that point to begin with. What can possibly be done to change it? Because it does seem like all of these states are, are doing things differently. I know New Jersey, they were talking about, or I think they did plan to put smokers ahead of the line. Uh, we were also talking about here in New York City, uh, drug addicts, because they live in close proximity to each other. When Don't they live people, in a house. Sort of people uh, in nursing house. homes, right? Yeah, I mean. exactly. Uh, how can we stop this? Well, you know, it, it, the elections matter. Yeah. You get what you vote for. And I think at the end of the day, people need to wake up. And I know I know that many people are waking up and they are seeing what's happening. And that's why we you know, won back so many seats in the House. And I was able to flip my district and hopefully we'll have a, a, a good outcome in the mayor's race here in New York City uh, in November. But the reality is, is that elections matter and people do need to be vocal. They have to let their voices be heard. They have to call their elected officials when they're not happy with what they're seeing. And I'm thankful, you know, we've been able to at least increase the uh, the list of people who've been able to qualify for vaccinations. We've been able mm -hmm. to get the mayor to add distribution sites. We've been able to work with the VA to get our veterans vaccinated. So we'll continue to forge ahead, uh, but we need people to make their voices heard, particularly when they see mm -hmm. decisions that are misguided like this being made. Well, we are listening to you.